Hello! Do you sometimes feel lost in transition? Well, then you might want to follow Schubert's road sign. In this video tutorial we will look at a song from the Franz Schubert song cycle Die Winterreise, composed in the year 1827, with lyrics by Wilhelm Müller. Song number 20, Der Wegweiser, has a most fascinating chord progression in the transition section that we will study in detail. The song is in the key of G minor. The opening lyrics are Was vermeid ich denn die Wege, wo die anderen wandern gehen? Or Why am I avoiding the roads that other people take? Let's listen to the opening section in the rendering for flute and piano, since you definitely do not want to hear me sing. Note the special features in the opening verse, sequential treatment of the second phrase, ending with a cadence on the lowered 7th degree, F minor, before returning to the tonic G minor. Also, there is a lot of chromatic motion in the inner and bass part. The focus of this tutorial is on the amazing chord progression in the transition in measures 57 to 68. We have the lyrics Einen Weiser sehe ich stehen und verrückt vor meinem Blick Eine Straße muss ich gehen, die noch keiner ging zurück. In translation I saw a sign, steady in my view. I have to go a road from which nobody ever returned. Schubert here turns out to be an early trekkie and boldly goes where no man has gone before, in the harmonic sense that is. But first let's listen to this section. Everything sounds natural and smoothly connected, but there are fascinating things happening harmonically that we will now discuss in detail. Here are the musical elements used in this transition. In just 11 measures, Schubert is moving through four minor keys, using symmetric division of the octave. The pitch disc diagram on the left shows the four root pitch classes G, B flat, C sharp and E, each at an interval of three semitones. And that root movement is notated as a Schillinger system root cycle symbol R minus 3 I. Schubert skips the E minor, instead returning from C sharp minor to the tonic key G minor. The connection of the root chords is shown on the right and involves a modulation with one common pitch that acts as a pivot. The chordal function 3 from the source key becomes the root in the destination key. I have discussed this approach in a movie with an example from a Tchaikovsky symphony. So Schubert is definitely taking a new road here in 1827. The second element is the connection of these symmetrically distributed minor keys with intermediate dominant chords of various types. The first type is shown here in the cadence on C major. Just before the regular 1-6-4-5-7-1 closing cadence, 
an F sharp diminished 7th chord is inserted, with the characteristic pitch F sharp ascending to the second inversion of the tonic chord C major with G in the bass. This intermediate chord is equivalent to a secondary dominant on the supertonic degree D7 flat 9 with root omitted. Let's listen to this chord progression. Another type of intermediate dominant chord is the augmented 6th chord, used twice by Schubert in a minor key. The typical augmented 6th chord in a major key cadence is shown here in diagram. Again, we note the equivalence with a secondary dominant chord on either the lowered 6th degree, the sub-median or on the supertonic degree. Now a D dominant 7 flat 5 flat 9 chord, again with root omitted. In fact, there are three forms of the augmented 6th chord that we will not discuss here, however. The origin of the augmented 6th chord may be explained from a voice leading point of view, as shown here. Starting from the first inversion F major chord, we apply chromatic contrary opening motion, with the bass part descending as A, A flat to G, while the middle voice arises as F, F sharp to G, into the second inversion tonic chord. It is the interval A flat to F sharp, which is the augmented sixth, giving the chord its name. Rewriting the F sharp as G flat leads to the dominant chord label A flat 7. The fourth element appears in the closing cadence of this transition. It is the major triad on the lowered supertonic degree in first inversion, called the Neapolitan sixth chord. The typical use in the full cadence in major is shown here in diagram, with the label N6 for the Neapolitan sixth chord. Note the use of the pitches A flat and D flat in the score, both with descending voice leading. These flattened pitches imply the introduction of minor key material in a major diatonic scale context. There is contrary motion between upper and lower parts. Additional elements contribute to the musical effect and underline the road of no return lyrics in the transition. There is a long ascending bass part with mostly chromatic steps. Another twist is the use of three tonic minor chords in the unstable second inversion position. And finally, there is the dynamics, getting louder from pianissimo to a forte climax near the end. Schubert mixes these ingredients to create this unique 11 measure chord progression, with great sophistication and in full support of the lyrics. These harmonies might be expected in late romantic music from, say, the period 1880 to 1910, but remember that the song was composed in 1827. This rather complicated diagram summarizes the long and winding road in the transition. The yellow arrows in the upper part indicate the path along the chord progression. We may recognize the elements. First, we see the symmetrically distributed roots of the four minor keys, with three semitones ascending root cycles. There are three occurrences of the diminished seventh chord. These are ambiguous and may be interpreted in multiple ways, depending on the local key. Then there are the two instances of the augmented sixth chord near the opening and end of this transition. These also have multiple meaning. The transition closes with a 2-5-1 cadence with two regular dominant seventh chords. 
Based on this interpretation, we may rewrite the transition and insert additional root notes in the harmony that help seeing the local ambiguity and the inherent logic in this chord progression. Maybe you should return to the original score fragment and have a look at the earlier diagrams to grasp the sophistication and beauty of this transition. However, as an experiment, let's try and apply this same chord progression in a contemporary style. I've written a short example in a 138 beats per minute tempo with a bridge section that is an adaptation of the Schubert original. The instrumentation is with techno-style synthesizers, rhythm and horns. See the annotated condensed score. Well, you might want to take further steps along this road. A detailed analysis of the Schubert song cycle and many more tonal music masterpieces may be found in the 6th edition of my ebook, available in the webshop. The modulation technique with common pitches is discussed in another video on this channel using an example from a Tchaikovsky symphony. For clarifying notation issues and an unconventional treatment of diatonic and symmetric harmony, see the Schillinger system of musical composition. That concludes this video tutorial. Hopefully there was something interesting in it for you. Please support my efforts, like or comment this movie. First time viewers are encouraged to subscribe to my channel. Remember that we are all in transition and thanks for watching.